Greetings everyone, Gaming Retro here, and a couple weeks ago I introduced you to uh, this Monterey Blue Alps keyboard, and I think I pointed out that even though the keyboard was, you know, overall in good shape, um, there was a decent amount of yellowing going on, and um, even in good lighting, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, it is fairly subtle, but a lot of the keys have different degrees of yellowing, and so I thought today we would uh, go through the process of essentially cleaning and restoring uh, the the original color to this keyboard, at least <clears throat> the uh, the plastic casing and uh, the keycaps. And just to kind of show you, I'm hoping that this comes through, but the, the key on the left, which I removed, and the one on the right... Uh, have different degrees of yellowing. There's definitely more yellowing on the three key and and less yellowing on the zero key. And uh, it's it's much easier to actually see this, I'd say, in sunlight. Um, but uh, the, the issue is that a lot of the keys have, have varying degrees of this uh, yellowing going on that often happens to this kind of plastic. So uh, the first thing that I usually do is just kind of gather up <clears throat> what I need. And what I, what I recommend is uh, some wipes, you know, some alcohol wipes uh, to initially give the whole keyboard a good uh, rub down and cleaning. Uh, I also recommend having on hand at least some of the melamine uh, foam you know, our magic eraser, but you can get this on Amazon for really cheap, so I do recommend picking it up there. Uh, you will also want some distilled water. I do recommend going with water and using that as uh, washing rather than uh, tap water because your tap water most likely contains, you know, some mineral in it that can, that can leave behind residue. So I always go with distilled water when I'm really trying to clean something thoroughly. Um, a bowl for putting the uh, keycaps in and cleaning them, colander uh, for removing excess uh, soap, and I didn't actually clean the soap, but um, we'll be using just some regular dish soap as well, and can't forget your key cap remover. Um, one of these things, you know, they're only a couple dollars online, uh, but they make the job of actually removing the keys much, much easier. Um, so I highly recommend getting one of these and uh, removing your keys that way. So the way this is going to happen is I think I'm just going to take all the keys off and then um, we'll put them in the bowl and mix it with some soap and then uh, clean them. Maybe use some of the alcohol wipes uh, both on the plastic case and as they come out of the soap water and rinse them off, use maybe alcohol wipes, wipes on that as well as an extra way of cleaning them. Uh, and then I've got some hydrogen peroxide, uh, which I'll show here in a little bit, and uh, we'll make a uh, small bowl uh, that we can put the keycaps in. You wanna just submerge them right underneath the hydrogen peroxide put them outside in the sun and uh, let the sun do the work of bleaching them basically uh, back to their original color. First things first, removing the keycaps and I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so that uh, you weren't bored out of your mind. Big fuzzies. Now in terms of proper technique with this, by the way, uh, these key removers, and you see me struggling with it a little bit because what I try to do is, is get down in here so that it's corner to corner. Um, and sometimes I can't quite get under there uh, properly and then it just slips. Um, but it's, it's much easier if you can go corner to corner here and extract it out that way. Lost a small piece, one of these little plastic pieces came out, but nothing was broken, thankfully. So I think I can just slide this metal part back in here, like so, and it's just fine.
Okay, so it only took about 10 minutes or so in uh, real time. And now that I've got all the keycaps off, I can kind of see how the keyboard's still a bit dirty. Um, so I'm going to start here with just using my trusty alcohol wipes. And these, in particular these Lysol Dual Action, um, have this kind of uh, textured, scrubby side to it. And I usually use that uh, first to get really uh, into the grime and, and get it off. Um, it's usually not abrasive enough that causes the plastic any real problem. And uh, I'll just kind of wipe down the whole uh, keyboard here. It's actually surprisingly clean in here. I did pull out some dust bunnies, but you know, overall, it's really not that, not that dirty. And you know, looking at looking at the keyboard case, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and clean it really well with this and the Magic Eraser. But um, you know, it's actually in really good shape, and it doesn't look it doesn't look discolored to me at all. I mean, the the back has has the same color and everything. So I think I don't think I need to bleach. Uh, the case, I think, I think that's fine, because um, I was thinking about taking this this off and uh, submerging the whole piece of plastic here, but you know, I think we're okay now. Um, there's there's still a little bit in here. It's probably not going to come out on video very well, but there's some spots here that are still a little grimy, and when when this doesn't work, the uh, Lysol wipes. What I like to do is get out my magic eraser melamine foam and uh, just wet it a little bit and then apply it and scrub it a little bit. And uh, this usually works pretty well. So I'm going to wet this a little bit and see if we can get any more of that off. Now you don't want too much moisture on these, so I just wetted the corner. Uh, you don't want a lot of moisture dripping down into your keyboard, of course. You can even tear a piece off of this and use it that way. Um, this is kind of clumsy with the whole whole sponge I'm using here. Get little pieces down in there. But after you've used the uh, Lysol wipes, if you still see kind of some dark color grime on your plastic, um, this this is really quite good at getting all of that off. Uh, it's kind of my uh, it's kind of my secret weapon when when cleaning uh, pla plastic or metal um, old electronics. You know, you just you want to be careful in terms of the moisture getting down in your electronics. But you know, the the melamine foam, in addition to these alcohol wipes, uh, gets most plastics and metals very clean. Uh, and actually, this this looks like it's in pretty good shape. I got a little bit off here. You can kind of see how it's dirty. That's a good sign. It does get crumbly, though, is a thing to watch out for. So I'm just going to put the keys in this bowl. I think I'll throw down a little bit of soap. I'm just using uh, regular dish soap here. Get my distilled water. Really just need enough to cover them uh, like that. Make sure my keyboard's out of the way. Now I like a big bowl like this uh, because you know it's probably gonna splash a little bit. When you're, when you're mixing it up like this.
throw a little more soap. Okay, so to rinse them off, uh, use the colander here. So I'm just going to go over the sink, pour them in there, and then uh, wash them off with a bit of water. And I do, by the way, use uh, the distilled water again to rinse them. Uh, so that again, you know, we're not leaving behind trace residues of, of minerals. Okay, it might take a minute or two of shaking and rinsing to get the soap off of uh, your keys and so forth. And uh, as I pick them out, um, I generally like to use uh, the Lysol wipe again, just to kind of make sure that uh, that they are clean, that you've you know gotten off all the sticky, grimy stuff that accumulates on keys and in between keys. And um, after that, actually, usually I dry them a little bit. Um, and, you know, I think once I get through with some of the keys here, I'll probably get out my hair dryer and, and dry them even more. I mean, you don't really want them to be wet very long, especially the ones that have the metal components. You want to dry those pretty quick if you can. Now as those continue to dry, I thought we'd get things ready here uh, with the peroxide. So I just got a small baking pan here, put on my latex gloves uh, to protect my hands from the peroxide. It's not really good to expose your hands, skin for you know any length of time and peroxide. Uh, I got this cheap stuff from Walmart, you know, 3% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, works just fine. And, you know, it's less than a dollar uh, a bottle and you get 32 fluid ounces, so a uh, pretty good deal. So I'm filling this up just uh, so that there's just enough, hopefully, that it covers the keys. Okay, what you want to do is kind of place them down in there. You might have to jiggle them a little bit. Uh, they might float a little bit too, but, you know, hopefully... If you've got enough in there, um, they kind of lock into place. Now you see they're floating at first, but uh, as the water, as the as the sorry, as the air bubbles um, are released, they should start to to settle a bit. All right, I've added more peroxide, and if you uh, if you flip them over kind of turn them over underneath the peroxide and then turn them so that they are face up you can generally get them to, to stay right up like this so this might take this might take you a few moments to actually get them mostly the way you want um, and uh, if I were doing this over again I think what I would do is use a bigger pan because um, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm going to have to I'm going to have to do this a couple times. I've got plenty of keys over here. I still need to get into the peroxide. I finally did get you know a good number of keys here to settle down and it was largely a matter of oop, there goes one uh, you know, keeping them submerged for a while and then um, kind of shaking them out to get any air bubbles. But they, they really do want to float. Now, the, the ones that are giving me a lot of trouble, what I'm probably going to end up having to do is use a Retrobrite, basically, you know, a hydrogen peroxide gel um, and cover them and then put them in a plastic bag. And, 
as frustrating as this was, uh, going that route isn't a whole lot better because then you're you know, having to put that gel over every single key, put them in a plastic bag, and put them outside the highway. So um, not, not a whole lot faster, I don't think. But, you know, for certain key types, and, and this one among them, apparently, as I've learned, just really don't want to sink. You know, even if you've gotten uh, most if not all the air bubbles out of them, they still want to still want to float. So, um, but I did get close to half the keys in here. So these guys are ready to be put outside. And then, um, yeah, I'll try doing this again. And then for the keys that they're giving me a lot of trouble, I might actually just get out a sandwich bag and some retro bright and handle it that way. But let's get these outside. So here we are out on the deck and thankfully it's a nice sunny day. Um, I couldn't get out here without at least some of the caps here uh, turning over on me, but um, yeah, most of them are, are still right side up. I'll put my gloves back on, kind of right side what I can, and just kind of leave these guys out for a couple hours and let the, let the sun do its thing. Now, if your keys are giving you a hard time like it was uh, with me here, and you know, it depends on what the keyboard is, what the key keys are actually like the key caps um, these are particularly light and, uh, and and clearly float a bit um, you know retro bright essentially is just you know you get this 40 volume uh, hydrogen peroxide gel and it's pretty cheap on Amazon and I've used this to whiten a lot of my plastics a lot of my yellow plastics and uh, for the keys um, what I found is, you know, just get a plastic bag and some kind of hard surface and a paintbrush and then just paint on uh, the gel and then insert your keys into the plastic all the same, you know, right side up facing the same direction and then on the hard, because it's on the hard surface, you can just pick this up and then move it outside. So I think probably for the rest of my keys um, I'm actually going to do the, the retrobrite method. So we could have started this way instead of trying to submerge them in uh, hydrogen peroxide. But um, I'm not sure it's really faster to, to paint all of these keys basically with, with gel and then put them in the bag and put them outside. So it's just another way of doing it. And uh, there's pros and cons to, uh, to both. But um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, put those outside and then hopefully... Um, the the overall result is similar and I've got to go back outside pretty soon and actually turn the uh, the pan that I've got out there and make sure the ones that flipped over are flipped over uh, right side up All right, let me show you an example what I'm talking about here in terms of application so you just got you just want to put a little bit on your paintbrush. I know some people will actually just empty this into a bowl or something like that and that probably makes it a little faster when you're doing so many small objects like this. But uh, yeah, I just kind of pretend like I'm painting and paint on the gel like this. And I, with the metal on this particular the space bar here is key, I can just hold on to that metal And you really do want to be wearing gloves, by the way, when you're doing this. Um, this 40 volume stuff uh, is pretty caustic. It's pretty, pretty nasty on the skin. It'll bleach it. It'll bleach just about anything. Uh, one downside of doing it this way, I found, uh, is that, you know, as you're putting the keys in the bag here, um, if it comes into contact with the with the bag with the top, it can you know take some of that retrobrite off of it, uh, which is not good. But you need some way of covering it with the retrobrite with the gel hydrogen peroxide because it'll evaporate pretty quick. So you kind of want to keep this covered as you are applying uh, the gel to your keys. And uh, I think you can see what how this is you know kind of a slow process. But yeah, you just want to cover your keys. 
as best as you can. Hold them by the underside if you can. Now I'm just kind of going through and doing all the keys, but actually, you know, if you're going to go through this process, which is pretty arduous, especially doing um, retro bright like this on keys, um, you might want to be selective and just pick out the keys that uh, are yellowing. You know, if there are a set of keys that are particularly yellow, um, as I had, then it kind of makes sense to just pick those out and work on those. My cat has joined me here. Uh, you know, if you don't really need that much of this gel. And uh, just dipping it in there one time, I'd be able to do like four keys. Now I'm actually kind of concentrating on these beige keys because I didn't see really any any uh, discoloring with the more kind of gray brown keys in there. So I think in this case it's okay to kind of concentrate on uh, just these light beige ones. I've got this little white uh, bit on here on the plastic that I'm having to avoid. I really should have flipped the bag over. Once you've got all your keys uh, in your Ziploc bag, then go ahead and close it off. Keep it from evaporating, which would be bad. I'm going to put it back outside with the other keys. Now what I ended up doing is actually putting uh, the keys and the peroxide that was in the pan into a plastic bag and just riding the keys that way. So it's kind of like a waterbed. Uh, for keys and peroxide and it works pretty well they seem to be mostly submerged here um, it's actually just kind of fun to poke at but uh, yeah this this kind of hybrid uh, seems to work pretty well and then I've got my keys with retro bright over here so hopefully this will work okay well the sun's out there hopefully doing its thing I thought uh, go ahead and clean um, the underside here the keyboard's actually pretty clean. You probably can't really see the dust in there very well, but there is some dust. And the way I usually handle that is just get some uh, Q-tips and some 99% uh, isopropyl uh, alcohol here. And uh, usually just put a little bit in this cap. Because that's probably about all you need, really. And get your Q-tip, dip it in there, and by just doing this, getting in between the the switches, uh, you should be able to clean it, you know, pretty well. Um, even even when it looks, you know, fairly clean, there can be a decent amount of dirt in there. So I usually just do this a few times with a few Q-tips and uh, clean things out. All right, I think I'm going to call it good. I, you know, I think this was clean enough that I probably didn't need to do that at all. I, I doubt that it really made any real difference here, but I just like the feeling of it being clean. And if I'm cleaning the keys and and restoring the, you know, native color of those keys, I kind of like the idea of it being really nice and clean uh, underneath those keycaps as well. So. You know, I just feel like I'm completing the, the cleaning process by doing this. But sometimes um, it really is very grimy under here, you know, depending on who owned it and, you know, whether they actually ever cleaned their keyboard. So on a keyboard this age, you know, well over 20 years old, um, you can kind of expect, if it was used, to, to have some dirt underneath it. It could impact how the keys function, especially if someone spilled something sticky, which often happens. Uh, gets in between the, the key switches. 
It looks like the sun's done their thing. I've kind of spot checked them and uh, they, they all look pretty good. You know, the, the beige ones look really consistent. Um, I do still have some of the, the gray ones in here, but I largely didn't uh, bleach those. I kind of put them to the side. So yeah, I mean they look pretty consistent and, and nice and uh, nice and lightly colored, not uh, not yellowed. So that's a good sign. So the next thing is to uh, get these guys out of the hydrogen peroxide and get them washed out. And I've got uh, got the colander back out, and so I'll just throw them in here. Get the uh, get the distilled water and uh, rinse them, and then it'll be a matter of letting them dry. So I think I'll do that off camera, just let them dry for a few hours, maybe use the hair dryer, and then uh, be time to put them back on the keyboard. So I rinsed and dried. I actually used a hair dryer again and then uh, let them sit out for a couple hours. Uh, all the keys, and they should be ready to go. Um, there were a couple things that I wanted to mention that are kind of words of wisdom here if you are attempting a project like this yourself. Um, one of them is, uh, you know, it's actually kind of helpful to have uh, another keyboard present that you can use as a template when you're putting the keys back on. Uh, even if you're familiar with keyboards, it's a good idea to either have a photo of the keyboard as it was before you took the keys off or yeah, an example keyboard that you can just work off of. Um, because I've been using keyboards my whole life. And I like to think I know where all the keys are, but it just makes the whole process easier and faster if I've got a model to work from. The other thing is that I had a couple keys escape me when I was using my colander, kind of swishing it around in the sink. And, you know, thankfully none of them went down into the, uh, the garbage disposal, uh, but, but a couple tried. And so um, I guess it's more of a warning that, uh, that be very careful if you're doing that you know, over the sink and, uh, and and don't swish it too hard because you could lose those those keys and you don't want any keys getting down the garbage disposal. So, okay, so I'm gonna, this is uh, not not the most enjoyable part of the process, but uh, certainly getting them, them all back on there is, uh, is quite rewarding. So start the process of putting all the keys back on and uh, go ahead and kind of fast forward through this. And these are interesting because, you know, the, the, this big ass enter key uh, actually has two pieces of metal and not just one holding it on here. Now, it took me quite a while to get that enter key back on and I found that it really helped out this little screwdriver so I could actually keep the, the little uh, metal uh, loop there that hooks on to the keyboard um, in the right place while I'm putting the key on. So I do recommend getting maybe a set of little screwdrivers to help hold uh, the, the metal uh, piece in place where it connects to the keyboard here uh, while you're putting the key back on. And I actually might think about uh, not removing the enter key if I can avoid it, if I don't actually need to, to remove it. I might just leave it on there. Once all the uh, once all the keys with the little metal clips um, have been attached, the rest of it should be a piece of cake uh, comparatively. Um, the the ones with the wires were a bit tricky because you gotta get the wires in the grooves um, while you're also putting the you know uh, the the key cap back down onto the uh, the switches.
thought I had lost a couple, but I managed to find them. I also had a couple keys uh, out of order here, and I managed to fix that. Um, that's the problem with, you know, not taking a photo be beforehand, and I forgot to do that. But um, largely got together just by memory and then had to reorder some of the keys. Uh, I also thought, yeah, I misplaced them, but uh, they were just uh, somewhere else there on the table. So... I think it looks really good. I don't notice any yellowing anymore. I think, I think the hydrogen peroxide did did its job, and uh, and everything looks uh, pretty pristine. I mean, it looks it looks basically new to me. Uh, I'm hoping this comes out okay in video. You can kind of see how they're much wider and uh, at the very least more consistent uh, in color than than it used to be. Um, and I didn't have to do really any cleaning with the cord. The, the cord is in surprisingly good shape. Um, I get the feeling that maybe this keyboard really wasn't used all that much, so it didn't really require as much cleaning as, as some others of, of the same vintage. So, pretty happy with the way this turned out. Uh, this is you know, the Blue Alps keys. I will post a link in the description because I did uh, give a short overview and and review of this keyboard the typing demonstration those keys are are really amazing they're they feel great they have this wonderful sound to them very punchy very nice tactile feel they are really my my favorite switches i think um, of all time so uh, if you like go uh take a look at that video and uh get some more details on this really quite excellent uh keyboard and uh, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Consider subscribing or just come back in the future and see what we've got posted. Um, and planning to come up with at least a couple videos here uh, every week. So thanks again and uh, come back.